So it is heater core day minus one. I've just pulled the Jeep into the garage and this is where it's gonna sit for the next few days. Tomorrow morning, after I have my coffee and get my thoughts together, I am going to start ripping this out. I'm gonna try to film as much as I can. I'm not gonna do a very detailed video, but I'll try to show um, you know, uh, enough to be able to learn a few things maybe and to understand whether or not you wanna take care of this yourself. I'm going to start by ripping out both front seats. The middle console's got to come out, and then I start working on the dash. So uh, it says, that, you know, depending on how fast you go and what you do, you can do the four-hour job, the eight-hour job. I think I'm just going to go and do everything just because I don't want to twist anything, push anything out of the way, break anything. So I'm probably going to end up removing the whole dash, but I'll see uh, how that comes about. I am actually going to work on this from Monday till I'm going to give myself till Friday. So way more than enough time, hopefully more time than I'll need. But the thing that I do know about this is I don't want to push it. And if I get aggravated, I want to be able to walk away for a couple of hours. I don't want to break things and uh, put myself in a worse position than already having to tackle this thing. So this is where it's going to sit and I'm not really looking forward to it. But uh, hopefully you get something out of the video and uh, you can learn a couple of things and watch me learn as I go as well. So now it's time. I've got all these free magnetic parts holders from Harbor Freight that I've collected over the past year or so buying stuff from them. And uh, I'll try to mark everything and at least keep some kind of organization going rather than throw everything together and then lose track of what parts go where. And I've got my tool chest ready so now it's just a point of getting motivated to actually start the work. Rather than struggle trying to get around uh, this plastic part on the side of the seat I just took this off. It's only uh, three or four Phillips head screws. Actually three, one in the back, two on the side. So I just took this off. It's easy to pop on and off and it's better than trying to struggle getting down to that bolt in the back. So to get the middle console out, you need to take off the handle here and you should be able to just pull this straight up and off like that. And then inside here you have uh, beginner beads. So just keep those in there, that doesn't have to come out, but uh, put the handle somewhere you don't lose it. And this plastic piece right here should pop right out. And the same for the plastic piece on the side. And that needs to slide over. So you do have harnesses in there, so you want to make sure that you don't uh, rip those out. You can see the one there. And then there's also one here that you can detach. And then before you remove the center console, uh, you're going to need to pop this metal se middle section out. And that's not held on by any hardware, so that just uh, comes out like that. And then in here, you have a screw here. There's a screw on the other side, and then there should be a couple in here. I've got to clean that out first. Out, and I think there's supposed to be one or two down there, which would explain why this thing's been moving around. So I'll have to look at that and see if I can't secure that when I reinstall it and also clean it out. So with those four screws out, the whole thing seems loose. I'm just going to keep the extra hardware in here so I know where it's at. And then it looks like I'm going to have to put that in four-wheel drive just to uh, make it easier to get out. And then I know the emergency brake needs to be pulled all the way up to get it out. I want the center console out. And I don't think this is supposed to be attached any other way, but uh, your ducting for your heat to go into the back seat just comes right out. And right there explains why I had no bolts in the rear part of my uh, console. So I don't know if I'm going to deal with that or not or just come up with something else. Maybe I'll just drill through the side 
into this plate here with a self-tapping screw or something because I can tell that there's nothing behind it. So maybe I'll just do that to keep it secure. I'll figure that out when I put it back in. So that's what it looks like. And now we can start ripping out part of the dash. Something that I want to point out about this, um, I know I said I was going to do some kind of mod where I would screw uh, into the, the metal on the other side to keep this secure. But there's a YouTuber out there called Major Weakness that did a uh, aftermarket bracket install where I think it either replaces this or it's an addition to this where you can install a bracket and it'll keep the uh, the entire console um, secure in the back. So you might want to change it. Uh, check him out. Again, his uh, YouTube handle is Major Weakness. To take off the glove box door, just take out the three Phillips head screws here. And then this should pull out. And then you've got these little rubber stoppers here that you might need to uh, push out of your way if the glove box doesn't drop on its own. So with the box down, I'll just drop my three screws in there so that I know where they're at later. And then that right there is what we're after. And got to rip out the whole dash to get start to it. on the next piece, which I'm going to remove the bottom panel there and the top section. Okay, so for this cover underneath the steering wheel, it's just secured by a couple little uh, tabs up top. You don't want to pull on that. Um, just to show you, but you want to take out the three screws that are underneath here. There's one there, one there, and one there. And then the tabs should pull out up top and the whole plate should come off. Plate is right there and I'm just going to take some tape and secure and that. And for this metal cover, there's a screw here and a screw here. For the top of the dash, you actually just have a connection point here. Then there's another one here, but you need to take out these screws here, 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 and here. And those are just Phillips, and you just pull those out, and the panel should just pop right off. Taking that off, you're going to have to force the headlight knob in and out of that hole. Um, so when you put it back in, you are going to have to put some pressure on it to get that back in. Same thing for taking it out. If this has never been off before, then this plastic piece that goes around the steering wheel, it actually connects together. And if you, if that's connected together, you're going to have a hard time pulling that apart. But this just slides out and I can't do it with one hand. Um, so that might hold you up and you might have uh, to finagle with that a little bit. For the rest of the top of the dash, all you need to do is go around the edge with a large screwdriver. You might not even need one. And just kind of pop it up. They're uh, only held in, or the whole thing's only held in by that all the way around. So I'll finish taking this off. I'm going to take off this section here. There's a screw up top here. Screw there. Another one down here. And then another one, um, actually, yeah, right here underneath. And then as I was taking it out, I realized that there's also one back here. I can't remember if the gauge needs to come out or not, but it's so easy to get out. It's just a screw here, here, and two on the other side that I'm just going to go ahead and pop it out. It's a plug and play, easily uh, thing to take out. So if you've got one that you want to replace or upgrade like I did to, uh, I had a really basic standard one. Now's a good time to do that or to put new LED lights in the back of it. That's super easy to do. Uh, I did that already in the past, but uh, I'm just gonna take that out and make it uh, so that there's less weight overall for the dash. And I'm also gonna take uh, my radio Mine's out. been modified and uh, you can see I got zip ties in there to keep it stable. So um, that's just a uh, kind of a redneck job right there. So I'll just remove that. Again, for the sake of uh, taking some weight out of the dash. Something to point out, um, as I was about to take off the electrical from this, you definitely want to disconnect your battery. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and make sure that uh, that's not going to be an issue since we're going to be tackling all the wiring harnesses here so shortly as well. All right, so in order to drop the steering column, some people will leave the front seat in place and then just set it on the front seat. I decided to completely take out my front seat because it gives me a lot more room and it's not that difficult to do. 
So what I'm going to do is just get a five gallon bucket and I'm going to set the steering wheel on that. But in order to take it down, you have up underneath the steering column, you have this bolt here. Here's the steering column and you got the bolt here. And then there's one on the other side up there as well. If I can get it for you there. And it's right, right there. So that takes a half inch socket and so I'm just gonna do a little bit on each side get it to the point where it falls down and then set it on the bucket for the passenger side airbag first I'm gonna disconnect the harness up here it's got a red pull tab so pull that out pull the harness out and then you've got a bolt right here, and that is a 10 millimeter. And then there is another one over here. And then up behind uh, the rubber tab here for the glove box, there's another one there. And then there is okay. actually another one way up in here. And I can't get it with a socket wrench, so I'm just going to get a regular uh, wrench, and that should pull that right out. So this harness did not want to come apart, so what I ended up having to do was in between the two pieces on the sides here, on the ears, as well as the top and the bottom, I had to take this screwdriver and just kind of gently wiggle it back and forth until the whole thing finally popped. Um, but I just didn't want to leave this connected when I took this off because I would have had to leave it dangling, so got it apart. There you go. There's your airbag. And uh, like I said, it, getting that uh, harness disconnected, that's kind of a big deal. You don't want that hanging off of there. It's just two thin wires and uh, that'll snap it right off. So uh, just take your time with that. Try not to break that in the process. And then to remove this one last uh, screw needs to be taken out. I've already taken out the others around the, uh, the edge. So once I get that one out, it should all pop out. So this out. door trim, don't mind the, the pool noodle. That's keeping my door open. Um, so this door trim is gonna be kind of in the way. You can see that there's like a, an edge piece here that may interfere with taking out the dash. So all I did was there's this little plastic plug here and I pulled that plug away and pulled it out of the hole. So I can show you here and see there's there's the hole. And then when you do that, the whole thing can kind of move out of the way. Just be careful not to break it. And um, I'm just going to kind of pull this to the side, maybe keep it with the bungee cord just out of the way when I need it to be. Uh, but that should be removed as well. And then just to have a clear line of sight and because I actually want to look at my fuse panel um, and just see how that's in there, I'm going to take off this panel. So what I need to do is take off this screw. Uh, there is a bolt, there's a nut here, and that I just loosened with a 10 millimeter. And with this thing already disconnected, after I remove that, the whole cover should just come off. So this is going to take a lot longer than I thought it would because... Uh, I wanted to take off this molding and pull back the carpet just to see what was there. And as you can see, it's uh, starting to rust really bad. This foam padding is absolutely soaked and I've got to do something about that. I've tapped in there with a screwdriver. It doesn't sound like I've got any holes, but uh, the top layer of paint is coming off and it's rusting underneath. So before it gets worse, and since I'm already here, um, once I have the dash ripped out, I'm going to go ahead and do that and maybe I'll do a separate video on it. I don't know. But at the very least, I'm going to pull the whole carpet back. I'm going to get all the rust out and, uh, primer it and put some, uh, like bed liner over the top of it. And then after that, probably put some kind of plastic barrier between the carpet and the paint so that if it does get wet again, it, uh, it, it won't further make that, uh, worse. So... Anyway, another job, another video. So in order for the dash to come out, this bracket right here that goes up here and through here needs to come out. And that is a 13 millimeter socket to take those four bolts out. So 
So once you have that bracket out, that supports the center of the overall dashboard. And then underneath the passenger side um, in the footwell is another, is a bolt, and that's also 13 millimeter. And I'm using a ratchet with a wobble socket extender on it uh, that help you get that placed on there easily. And then I'm gonna loosen that up to the point, uh, I'm not gonna take it all the way out, because I'm gonna re loosen up the top bolts first. And then over on the other side where the hood releases there's another you can see it right there above it that gray bolt that's going to be the same thing and i'm going to go ahead and loosen that one as well okay so the bolt i was talking about is actually up in here but i need to take this plastic cover off so i'm going to go ahead and do that before i take that bolt out so now that's that that's out you can see that uh, the entire dash does move so i'm going to go ahead and loosen the bolts up top here there are two there's one there and there's one over there and then there's a couple on the other side and it looks like and those bolts are going to be 10 millimeter All right, so now that I have those four bolts out, there's two more small ones, one right there and one over there that also need to be loosened. And then the dash should basically kind of pop out. All right, so with all those out, the dash took a little bit of jiggling to get it out and I had to do it from the other side. And you can see the whole thing does move. I just need to uh, figure out what's hung up on the other side. But I've got pretty much most of it out at this point. All right, so to get to this point was some trial and error and uh, the only way to get this dash completely out, I believe, is to completely remove the steering column. That's one thing I don't want to do. So, however, I am glad I took out the radio. I'm glad I took out the airbag. It made the entire dash uh, a lot um, lighter to, to deal with. So, after some jiggling around and uh, trying to uh, figure out where it was hung up, um, I came to realize that uh, there were a couple of areas that were holding it up and one was th these bolts that are on the side that I loosened up earlier. Um, where are they at? Oh, right there. This one. They either need to be all the way off or are pretty much all the way out in order for this bracket here to slide out of them. They kept getting hung up on that. So I backed them out most of the way. and. And then uh, it, it did manage to come out. The other thing is the wiring harness. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But that box there has, uh, as you can see, large uh, harness connectors. And they can be um, taken apart. However, I didn't want to do that at this point if I didn't have to. So what I ended up doing is, so you can see the box here. So... The wire harness here is attached to this bracket back here where my thumb is. And and then it's also attached up, let's see if you can see that, probably not, up here. So there's these two points that slide into the connector here. And then there's another one back here. You can see that. So in order to get that out, you need to uh, depress the plastic piece that goes into the slot. Shoot, there. And then it, it's not easy to do. It's uh, actually pretty difficult. Um, I ended up using, where's the tool that I used? It's 
So I used this tool here to, hopefully you can see this, get inside the plastic. So you depress the, the plastic that's inside this area. And what that does is it releases it from the metal bracket. Um, so once you do that on one side, you need to do it on the other and then just kind of jiggle it back and forth and then it'll pop out. And theoretically, and you can see it um, here. So same thing here with this part. So you depress, depress the plastic there and then it goes into... There you go, you can see. There you go. So this point here goes into this here. So we got those two uh, brackets that connect to the plastic box. And once you depress the plastic using a tool like this, you can wiggle uh, both sides out. And theoretically, uh, these should slide just back in place and just click in place when you're ready to put it back together. So there you can see how far I have the dash pulled away, and there is the box that we're going to take out next. And I'm not really looking forward to that. I think I had this out of the way enough to have enough room to get that out. So on this side, you can see that I've got uh, one bungee cord around the middle lip here that goes to my handle or grab handle, and then the other one I've got going up over the roof line and being pulled back out of the way, and it can probably be pulled a little bit more, um, but that should give me enough room once I disconnect this wiring harness, which looks like you just pull up this and pull that out. That'll give me probably a bit more space, and then also one other thing to do is to disconnect the antenna and see if that could give me a little bit more play as well. So for the antenna line, that there, that just connected to this piece here. I just gave it a, uh, just held it on both ends and gave it a tug and it came right apart. Harness. All you have to do is pull up on this uh, plastic piece here and they popped right out, popped right apart. So the four bolts that gotta come loose inside the engine bay Uh, in order to get that box out. Um, there's one back behind the oil dipstick and it's right there, um, but it's got a hose that's also attached to it. So I'm gonna have to pry off that little piece to get to the nut behind there. You can see it right there. And then I've got back behind all this. Let's see if I can get that. There's another one there, and then there's one above that, which I don't know if you can see, yeah, right there. And then there's going to be a really tricky one that's all the way back there, so it's going to require probably a lot of uh, wobble extensions and extensions. So uh, I'm going to start working on that now. Just uh, something to point out is I've already had the refrigerant bled uh, by a guy um, that I used to do some work on my Jeep. So I brought it over to him and uh, he took the refrigerant out. So that needs to be done before you uh, start working on this. All right, so to disconnect the hoses from the firewall, um, I forget exactly what this thing's called, but anyway, this is easy to move. You just, depending on which way your bracket is, uh, it either slides up or down. Um, I know my buddies is opposite of this. So I don't know if mine's upside down or his, but maybe somebody can tell me in the comments, but that's just how it goes. And then I'll, I'll keep that out of the way um, and I'll probably disconnect that wiring harness right there. This comes off pretty easily. And then I can go ahead and start getting at these by taking off uh, these metal covers and then try to film how I get these things apart. So far, I have managed just taken off this uh, hose right here and this wiring harness and this one here I've just disconnected because they were in my way. 
I am trying to get these two hoses off and after 20 minutes I am completely frustrated and they are not working. Um, they are the right size, they do slip back behind there. So I'm going to go watch some videos on some tips. I am really frustrated right now and I don't want to do anything stupid. Um, worst case scenario, I am going to take a sawzall or something and cut these hoses off and then get them uh, separated because uh, I've got to replace this unit anyway. So uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now, but I'll watch some videos and see if I can't get some tips. So after trying to get the AC hoses off using these things, um, no matter how much I tried, they just would not come loose. So I ended up uh, doing what I did for my transmission cooler line on the radiator, which was devise something out of a hose clamp. And all you do is you take one of your smaller hose clamps, something that's about the diameter of the hose you're about to put it on, just cut it with a 10 snips, and uh, you end up with something like this. So I'll show you that um, with still a little bit of finagling, I did uh, manage to get it on, but what you do is you just slide it over, and then you pull that in there. Now, I, in order to do this, I ended up still having to use um, pliers to kind of shove it inside there until you hear the click. And uh, th this one didn't have to be seated all the way around, just mostly. And once I had that done, I was able to pull it loose. Uh, but I actually even needed a crowbar um, to just put a little bit of tension on this line and pull it because I got it about halfway out and then it wouldn't come out anymore. So um, while I was pulling on it, I just gently nudged it with the crowbar as well and then it popped out. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one and uh, hope for the best. So what I had to do was uh, put my gloves on since the metal's kind of sharp and push back on the ring and get it to seat inside here and then pull on the hose at the same time. So maybe it would have worked with the plastic pieces. I tried just about everything I thought I could. I ended up even um, rimming the pat plastic pieces so I can't put them back in. I'm going to have to uh, sand down the edges but at least the hose clamp thing worked and I can move on to the next step. So for the heater hoses, um, because these lines haven't been cut before, I just went ahead and cut it with a razor blade um, along this section here. And then I still had to dig it out with this tool. Now this tool is pointy, but since I'm cutting off that part of the radiator hose, um, it doesn't matter if it pokes it. And there's enough slack in here that I can cut this off around here and then um, have it go up to here. So that's not going to be an issue. Uh, I'm going to see if I have extra hoses. If I do, I'm going to go ahead and put a new one on. If I don't, then I'll just have to reuse these. I know there's a tool out there uh, that you can use to pull these off, but I don't have that tool. I didn't even think about it, and I was already into this job, so um, that's just how it works. So luckily, I have enough hose to just cut it off and uh, redo it. But I'd have to say between doing these cooling lines and these radiator hoses, that is the worst part of the job so far. All right, guys, I don't know what to tell you. I didn't want to film all this because it was completely trial and error. But as you can see, I've totally disassembled so many things. Um, I've uh, taken off harnesses. That one I had shown you before. This one came off. I took this off. I don't even know what it's called, some kind of pump maybe or something. The bracket came off. This wiring harness is a huge, huge pain. It is stiff and it does not want to move. I pulled the Christmas tree fastener out of it so I can move it around. But uh, this whole section down here does not want to move and I needed that to move to get this bracket out. Um, so that's going to be fun getting back in. But the reason for that is because of the nut all the way back there and uh, I just couldn't figure out no matter what I did no matter what angle I had I have uh, you know all sorts of 
extensions as far as those go wobbly extensions the elbows everything and i just couldn't get it to work so i, I said yeah the hell with it and now i've got the space i can actually get in there and pull this thing out um i'll just rehook everything back up it's not that big of a deal and just hope for the best when i start it but uh so these two down here uh the two at that part of the firewall those just came out with this and one tip I will give you, I used uh, deep creep on all these, and so far I've had none of the bolts spin. Luckily, while I've been taking these out, but I've got two more to go, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I've still got to get the one um, back there behind the uh, the dipstick. So I'll uh, give you an update. Sorry I didn't film this part, but you know what? For you, it's just going to have to be trial and error. Maybe you won't have to deal with this much stuff in your way, or you'll be able to get at it easier. Dealing with the lifted vehicle... I have to do everything standing on the rim, standing on the tire, standing on the bumper. Uh, so it does make it a lot more difficult as well. So maybe you won't have to rip all that apart. But if you do, then, you know, it's just vacuum hoses and, and harnesses and some bolts for some brackets. It's not really that big of a deal. So uh, let me see how the other two go. So that bolt down there with everything out of the way took me about two minutes to get out. And all I needed was the long wobbly extension, the elbow, and uh, a short socket. And that took no time. And I'm telling you what, that deep creep did a major, uh, was a major help to me, man, because uh, the bolts are not spinning and I don't know how I would have got in there and, and tried to finagle pliers and everything else trying to hold that bolt in place. So one more to go back there and we'll see if we can't get this thing out. So for the bolt down in there, once uh, I pulled that hose away, you can see that I've got it pulled back with a bungee cord. Uh, the only way to really get at it, you can't really put a, uh, a long enough uh, socket on there to not uh, have it bottom out on that bolt. So what you have to do is use a 7 16th inch wrench. And luckily there's enough space back there to use a ratcheting wrench. So I just loosened up and turn the rest out by hand or with a socket on it and then that uh, that worked by hand so uh, got lucky with all four bolts because the deep creep did work and it didn't spin any of the bolts so next up uh, I think I'm going to deal with something else because I'm pretty much done for the day I'm uh, a little frustrated so call it quits for today start again tomorrow so I completely forgot a bolt and I took down, took out the one there, but I didn't take out the one that's up top. So that one also has to come out. Since I'm taking a break from the heater core for the night, I've decided to go ahead and tackle the rust in here, which is a good time to do it. Everything's out of the way, the seats are out. So I've got a couple of rust spots there. They're actually not as bad as they look. Um, none of it's uh, more than surface rust. So this stuff I've been working at, some of that's just dirt, but uh, the rest of it's down to bare metal. I still got to work back there. And I'm going to paint it and then let it dry and put some kind of barrier between the carpeting and there. Um, I'm not going to completely seal it off with plastic because you still want it to uh, be able to breathe a little bit. But at the same time, I don't want the carpet to get wet again, you know, with uh, snow or water from boots or anything like that. Um, I do have uh, good floor protectors with the lips on them, um, kind of like uh, the, what is it, Husky liners or something like that. Um, so I do have stuff like that from Rugged Bridge, so that'll help, but I still don't want uh, to go through this again. So this so is what I'll do for the rest of the night and start again tomorrow on the heater core.